Okay, now we have um, the chairman of the Nez Perce Tribe, or NEPTIC, Nez Perce Tribal Executive Committee, Samuel Penny, and um, I was really proud to see him and Shannon, uh, others, spearheading this Sama Orca Conference and pushing for the dam breaching and d or dam removal. Uh, one thing I guess I'd like to say is people don't, um, I've never heard it mentioned too much, but those four lower Snake River dams were designed to be breached. Like they have an earthen part, they have a concrete part so they can remove the earthen part and then allow the water to free uh, flow better. And it's kind of like uh, David was saying about this water here, like this is all reservoir. Then you can, it, the reservoir goes way up by a soat and past the soat in a little ways. So it's all slack water, and that's really detrimental to the salmon because the water is warm. Like this water is really warm compared to the clear water where it's free flowing. So, um, like I said, I just appreciate the tribal council pushing this issue and uh, the other tribes up and down the river pushing for it. So it's really nice to see. So here's Sam Penny. Well, Coach Mary, I'd just like to welcome everyone here this morning. As Julian mentioned, I first recall this issue of dam breaching came up before the Nesper's Trial Exec Executive Committee in 1999. So that was the very first time that we, one of the very first times that we start talking about dam breaching. But before I begin, you know, I'd like to thank Julian and the, the uh, Nimi Pu Protecting the Environment and also the, the carvers, the Healing of Tears carvers that have, you know, d have carved this magnificent totem pole and you know, I've been to Lummi very many times, and you know they have a rich history and culture and tradition there. And they've done this several times before on other, either natural disasters or other issues that happen across this country, and have been advocating for protection of sacred sites all across this country. So, you know, we commend them for all all that they do. And I'd also like to just talk briefly about what was mentioned about. No, these the slack water. We just had a discussion the other day about warm water temperatures and the effects it has on all anatomous fish, including you know lamprey and steelhead. So right now, for those that don't know, that they're releasing you know, a lot of water from Dorshack Dam be because these slack waters are so warm that it's fatal to fish. So you know predators and all along the route the migration of, of anatomous fish are, are in danger of extinction. So that's why we're at a critical point right now. And the only way that we can get any action is to, as, Je as Julia mentioned, Orc and Salmon Summit last week, you know, to educate Northwest congressional delegations because right now they're in key positions within the United States Congress to take some action now. And when I read about the significance of this magnificent piece, you know, it's 2,800 mile journey across this country, and then it'll be at the uh, Smith S Smithsonian National Museum of American Indian, where it will be a reminder to the current administration and to future administrations, as well as to Congress, that you know the plight of not only the the salmon issue here in the Northwest, but the plight of indigenous people across this country and around the world. I think we've seen recently the issue of residential schools up in Canada, uh, the issue of boarding schools here in this country, you know, missing and murdered uh, indigenous women, uh, missing children. So just a number of things that happened across this country uh, with Native Americans. So we just hope that you know, the journey of this totem will be safe as it was stated in the prayer and that it be a constant reminder to Congress and the general public that the indigenous people were still here and we've, we sur survived all the things that have, have happened to us and will continue to fight for the natural resources that we're all so dependent on. So I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to be here with us today. I know we have other speakers that you know may go into more detail about you know the plight of the snake but I just like to again thank all of you for being here with us today. Katsiayo. Thanks a lot. Katsiayo, Sam. So I'd like to have um, Freddie and some of the, we have some of the people that actually carved this and are taking it around. Just come up and introduce yourselves. Yeah. 
so we I think we first heard about us I was talking to Becca and um, they had this other kind of display we we're talking about bringing here where they put it somewhere and then I talked to Freddie we we're talking on about rights of nature rights of the river with the tribe our tribe passed the rights of the river and so we're still we're working on rights of nature so that's kind of a big topic right now and so um, we started talking to them about bringing it here and so it's pretty cool to see and one thing that I really like about it because at the tribe with our kids every Wednesday during the school year we have them come and we carved a canoe uh, dugout canoe with four, 30 fourth and fifth graders and we still work on paddle making and so the kids are learning how to make paddles and carve it's pretty cool and uh, so then anyway we're because this is the same type you know we're using wood something from mother earth nature that we're using as a symbol like with the canoe the symbol was essentially that like right now we it's hard for the salmon to go up and down the river just like we used to drive or ride in canoes like it's really hard because the dams and it's really restricts just like the salmon we have trouble going up and down the river in a canoe i mean you can go through the locks but that's you got to have permission i think and all kinds of complicated stuff so but with the totem it's really nice i'm really grateful to have these people here and like to thank them for coming here and so here's freddie oh god don't hand me a mic Come on, round of applause for Julian. Come on. Come on, you could do better than that. Takes a lot of work to 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 do this work. And thank you, Julian. Just um, you know, there's a lot of your your elders and your ancestors that are standing behind you right now on the mountains, over in the other mountain behind you. We all have to remember that we come we, we come from our ancestors, and we, we always got to acknowledge our ancestors. Uh, maybe you don't believe in them, and that's okay, but you, you, you always have to remember where you come from. Catherine Hummingbird, Miami, she said that if you don't know where you come from, you don't know where you're going. So always remember where you come from. It doesn't matter your tribe, your continent, your language. If you're red, white, black, or yellow, you're part of the human family. But always remember where you come from, you young people. Just want to thank, um, I want to call up uh, Uncle Emerson before we begin. And uh, this is the, the words of Sasiath, who can't be here, Jewel James. Uh, he sends his love and and uh, honor. He's he's doing better. For those of you that that haven't heard, he was at the our event yesterday. So I want a round of applause for Jewel. He might be watching this somewhere. Sasiath, we're thinking of you. Sending our love from from up up river here. And so I want to ask uh, Uncle Emerson Gorman. I apologize. I I don't know your Indian name. Um, my Indian name is Salkadeb. Um, my Christian name's Frederick Lane. I'm the 11th child of the late Vernon and Nancy Lane, both of Lummi. They always tell me, look up when you're speaking. You know, it's just those kind of teachings that I've experienced with uh, Uncle Doug and Uncle Emerson here. They're not my real uncles, for those of you. You know, a lot of us are orphans here today. And so when you lose your mom or your dad or your auntie, I have no more. I have just aunties in my life. Uh, and I always just honor the honor, you know, these loved ones that step in and be that parent, be that uncle. And, and so I, I just wanted to, to introduce uh, Uncle Emerson Gorman here. He's Jewel asked and request that we start each each ceremony uh, in the peyote way with uncle he's a very humble man just joined us so he's this is day two for him and we've been on this for 104 stops today so give uncle a round of applause acm oh get i again Greetings to each and every one of you. Thank you for coming over and uh, taking part in this uh, sacred journey. Um, I have a name, Indian name, which is uh, I interpret it as a running warrior. 
And um, my English name is Emerson Gorman. And uh, I come from a descendant of the Utes and um, adopted into the Navajos, the Ney. I'm from Arizona within those four sacred mountains. That's where I reside. And I made a journey up here two days ago so I could be able to go on this journey with you all, uh, with your thoughts, with your prayers and songs. And then uh, my brother, Jew, I met him way back in 1979 through this, uh, the prayers and songs and then some of the ceremonial things that I do. And I used to travel, you know, a lot. But nowadays, uh, I, I really don't travel much anymore. But uh, to this day, um, we've been through uh, a lot with our people, Jules and I. And then along the way, I met up with Freddie. And then over here, Doug, his wife. And then uh, the Carvers, too. House of Tears, Carvers. And uh, I carve with you. Every time when I have a chance, when I'm going through uh, Lummi, I traveled and uh, and I do and did some carving with with uh, my brother Jewel. So uh, when you look around, you know, in various places where you travel, sometimes you know that uh, our elders they always say that uh, this is a real significant place on this earth for us indigenous people, and also. Uh, all these things are surroundings. They're very sacred. That's what they say. And that's the way I believe it. So these trees that are here, it means a lot. There are ancestors from the generation time. In the past, they're still here with us. So this tree right here, the symbolic symbol that's are on this uh, the, the, the totem here, it means a lot to me because... Uh, that's where the prayers and the songs, they're all here with us. And um, this pole here, offering was made for it. And then after that, it's been uh, carved out to where it could be recognized through the Indian nation, not just only the Indian nation, but um, all through uh, other states, other, other uh, nationalities. So, um, we're going to be uh, journeying with this pole with prayers and songs. And here, Freddie said, um, I'm going to do a prayer what my brother recommended that I could be able to do to travel to, uh, with prayers. And, and my ancestors always said that, you know, never travel without prayers, songs. Always have that. And uh, you're being watched every day, every night. The, the spirits, you know, they listen to you. So wherever you go, there's spirits. So uh, that's the way I believe it. So I'm going to go ahead and make a prayer. And um, I want to enjoy all of you, your life, your beautiful life. So I want to say that much. And uh, I thank the veterans, our warriors, So that way too. And the songs and the prayers that's been said too also. So I want to uh, go ahead and pray. I'm going to go ahead and pray in my own language.
Thank you, each one of you. Hello, my name is Yamawit, and I am from the Lummi Nation, and I am a member of the House of Tears. My husband is Sitki Kadam, a.k.a. Doug James, and um, I'm just very happy to be here. I'll talk to you a little bit more, but at this time, we're just doing introduction, and it's so good to see all of you beautiful people here today. Heishka. Aichkochil to each and every one of you. Sitki Kedem Sanasnat. I am really greatly honored to be standing upon this land today. For the ancestors that walked this land before all of us to come and mix our tracks with, with the ancestors and all of you that are present today. The spirits are strong. We uh, come down off the line of uh, Chief Siath, the Duwamish. We come off of our Lummi Nation. Our, uh, my brother Jewel really puts his hands out to each and every one of you. And he's thanking all of you that have uh, had a heart prayer for him. You know, he's uh, preparing to go through a surgery, but uh, he wants to just raise his hands to all of us in a ball of you that uh, we can continue the path that we're upon and do the work that's set before us. This is not our work. This is, uh, <clears throat> this is what the Lord put on our, our plate for us to do. So um, we're just following, following the spirit the best that we can. We um, run into opposition from time to time. We run into walls, you know, spiritual walls. But, you know, we pick ourselves up and continue to move forward. We uh, lift each other up in prayer for protection. And so... I just want to say Heishka to our elders that are here, to all the youth that are here, and it's to the youth that the baton is going to be passed down to. You know, we've heard it said, you know, that the uh, voices that got to be heard today are your voices. With climate change coming on and everything else, you know, when we're long gone in dust, what are we going to pass the baton down to our seven, next seven generations to? What kind of lifestyle are they going to have? You know, so we're just asking that each and every one of us has an obligation to reach out and let your voice be heard. For those that don't have a voice, the orcas, the salmon, you know, they're all in dire straits, and it's up to us to uh, speak up for them. So it's our obligation, our sacred obligation, to fulfill whatever we can do to make something right. Turn it around and put it in the right perspective to where we can share what our elders before us had to go to the river and retrieve that salmon at any given time our families were hungry. So with that, I want to say Heishka. Uh, we're asking the veterans to please come forward here for a moment. The veterans, could you please come forward? All you veterans, please. <laughs> I just got a little something that they want to hand out to you and um, to remember this day. As they're doing this, I'd like to share a shaker song with you, CM. Here's him. 
See, um, Ms. Dollar Trust, see, um, in 2013, we had a pastor come to our one of our gatherings. And this pastor, I asked him who sent him. I says, tell me who sent you and why are you, why are you here? And he says, well, this is um, God sent me and he needed me to tell you this. He said, it's really, really important to pray for the healing of the land. If the land can heal, the people heal. I said, the Lord told me and wanted me to pass that on to all of us. You know, so pray for the healing of our land, you know, because we're going to be leaving it to our children. And so that, uh, with that, you know, I just want to say hi to each and every one of the veterans once again, thanking you for, for standing up for each and every one of us and for our future generations. You know, you guys are way makers and our hands are out to you. Thank you. Oh, Sam. Give him a round of applause once again, Sam. Hi, Sam. I'm going to try to make mine incredibly brief. Um, <clears throat> my name is Duran uh, Montgomery. I've been uh, a key assistant to the whole crew, this incredible crew. Um, and happy to say that I helped with the last layer uh, of the poll. Uh, I was with them in the very beginning, and I'm going to stay with them to the very end. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, Julian, and all the, the hosts here. Thank you so much for having us, and thank you. My name is Melanie. I come from a lineage of 
Eastern and Western European colonizers, settlers in South, Central, and North America. And in reaction to a spiritual crisis in our dominant culture, we're bringing out this painting to um, open a reflection around how do we build capacity to understand that we're all interconnected. And this is a question that Jewel James placed one of the master carvers, Sasyath, um, about three years ago, and, and it just kind of stuck. And so this tapestry that you'll see on the side, it's a knowledge exchange of different rituals and practices and costumes, things that you do, the small things that you do on your daily lives that gets you to build from the inside of your bones that understanding that we're connected with all. So you're more than welcome to come to just watch, witness, or paint by numbers, paint stories that we've collected from the events before, paint your own story, and put some color to your day. Thanks. Um, he's a veteran. Is that why he came up here, Leroy? To get the, okay, come on. He's a veteran. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Maybe just explain what you mean by this. Huh? Okay. We got, um, when I was traveling, I went over to, or Nooksack tribe, they had a kind of a, a conference out and um, camp out type deal. And I was over there and there's, I learned some different, um, how they say thank you or, so Freddie's gonna give us a little, do you want us to give you this? <clears throat> now Siam, Nostalgia Siam, Sohila Quinnesanat Tato Tikaya Siam, Nostalgia, So Kedab, so Kedab, send us not. It's true, my heart is glad to be here with each and every one of you, from the youngest to the oldest. My Indian name again is So Kedab. My Christian, my government name is Frederick Lane. Um, it's truly an honor to be here. I was sharing with the youth when we were adjusting the totem pole earlier. Uh, I, I again want to extend my thanks to the to the men and the women that uh, that are helping with this work and that helped us do that little bit of work. And I was explaining how you know Western culture we give you know the applause, the crowd goes wild, right? Well, I was explaining how in 2007 when we hosted our first potlatch in 72 years. And for those of you that don't understand the potlatch, it's a, it's a, it, it was a, it was a event that was outlawed by the governments of Canada and the United States. And, uh, but at the potlatch, we brought back Syed. 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 We raise our hands. And so that's what, by the end of the, by the end of our potlatch, everybody was raising their hand, young and old. And, um, but I just, just explaining a little, little bit, I want to thank Uncle Emerson for his prayer. Really glad he's here. Uh, I know Dr. Russo never came out. He's way in the back, right over there. Everybody turn that way and look at him. The guy in the black shirt with the, hey, Sam, give him a round of applause. Dr. Russo's the... You know, Bellingham, Washington, I was saying, was the home of the totem pole journey. I want to see that when the mayor, I wanted the mayor to do that for our hometown team. But it's been 20 years. Um, I know it's it's supposed to be in the low 90s today. Uh, um, so hopefully we won't let you burn up too much. But as you could see, I'm really behind the scenes. I'm the road manager. I'm the pace car. I'm the blocker. I'm the, as Jewel James would say, I know he's watching a scapegoat sometimes. Uh, but we just wanted to, uh, first of all, we wanted to uh, have our members of the council here. If you could please stand or come forward. Uh, again, I, we apologize. We're trying to take care. Hate to say it, but, you know, we want to have, I don't like saying having ceremony and running. 
but uh, we we just wanted to 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 blanket our 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 leaders here. Give them a round of applause, please, if you would. I I just yeah a little louder, a little louder. Come on now, come on, yeah yeah yeah. It's okay, it's okay to give a round of applause to raise your hands now. Yes, yeah. You know, it's just these teachable moments that we we want to pass on because this last year I was on council and uh, for the home team, Melmi Nation, proud of our leaders, proud of our veterans, our youth, our, our community leaders. You know, we can't do this alone. I was a community leader before I became a tribal leader. And uh, for those of you that survived the pandemic, hint, hint, that's a joke. Uh, it, for us as tribal leaders, it, I call it a dog year. And, and if you can imagine, if you can imagine shutting your borders, shutting your businesses, making everybody hibernate and doing it for their public health, doing it for the elders, doing it for your your children, your grandchildren. And, you know, that's the resilience that we as indigenous people have as, as leaders, the great chiefs, and, and, and most especially the, those women that stand behind the great chiefs. And it's the same. A lot of the leadership, you know, it, it's thankless. I was called every name in the book. Trust me, and I know the book now. But, you know, that's not to say that I wouldn't do it again and that I wouldn't be doing this, this sacred work here, coming into the territory of our relatives as we stand together, to stand together, to speak for those who can't speak for themselves. We were in Fort McDermott where they're proposing probably the North America's largest lithium mine. And and it, the mercury mine ruined their ruined their uh, their river, their drinking water. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if one of those oil cars or one of those coal trains spill in your sacred river? C can you imagine? Whatever this plant is down here, I don't know what it is, but it doesn't smell good. You know, I couldn't if they're putting that into the air, I couldn't imagine what they're putting into the the sacred waters. But I guess I just now I just gotta kind of hand it off again to the chairman here and just to I don't know, did we go through this already? Hey. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for the blanket. And I was mentioned to Shannon, but I forgot to acknowledge our, el our elders that are here with us today, and also the veterans that came forward. And also, we had a monthly meeting of our veterans yesterday, and we got to honor uh, one of our longtime uh, former councilmen, but elder that helps us with many of the ceremonies that, that we carry on through the Nespers War Memorials. So it's just important that as you said, to take the time to uh, have these ceremonies, and we just, I just appreciate, appreciate everything you're doing. Katsiyaya. Katsiyaya, Nunyam Haniwa, Kiata Awatis, Alpawe, Sayakas Ki Lahin Haniwat, Enam Waswanik, Titoka Timt, Wheel We Oak Tapu, Sayapo Timtki, Shannon Wheeler. I'd like to just uh, uh, thank the Creator for this day today and and the sacred the sacred ground uh, Alpawe the Alpawe area the Red Wolf area and also uh, this just the the Creator for blessing us today uh, um, for walk being able to walk this sacred ground and, and blessing us with the beautiful day and uh, uh, my my name my uh, Nimi Putim name. We we Oktpu is a is a passed down from our father's side, uh, uh, from the Reverend William Wheeler, who was uh, became a Presbyterian uh, Reverend uh, back in the 1800s. And I carry that name with honor, and I'm privileged to be able to have that name, 
and it means it's a place far down the river and it's reference to uh the river and in, in, in a place uh our people uh, on our father's side grew up in the headwaters of of the selway river which is a tributary uh, into the clear water into the snake river but uh i would like to actually share some more thoughts on on uh on dam breaching but i would uh, defer to uh my elders first uh, uh opportunity to speak Hey, Cassiaya. My name is Arthur Broncho. I serve as the chaplain of the Desperate Child Executive Committee. And I've liked all the words I've heard this morning, especially the words that we're here speaking for the ones that cannot speak, are salmon and orca. And I would also would like to mention that our future generations, those yet unborn yet, are not able to speak yet, but their time will come when we set an example today of what we're trying to do as people. When I say people, I mean all people. We're all human beings of this world. So with that, I would like to pack out and pass this on to my uncle and my elder, who I respect very much, Silas Whitman. That means from the North Star, uh, tied in through Kayuin Sapalas. Sapalas is the uh, whirlwind that comes from the star, the Lone Star. The name emanated from uh, my paternal side, who came from the El Poway. When the separation was upon us, when it was put to those who were surviving on the lands to either go to Lapway, to the fort, to the churches, change your ways. It was difficult for Chief Timothy at that time to, he knew that in his heart that some of the others wanted to remain free but he knew we had to change. What happened then is that the largest element that joined Chief Joseph came from the El Pauwe. They went up upper El Pauwe into the Wanaha and joined with our Cayuse brothers from Oregon. There was enough there that before we participated in the ceremonies after the problems we had incurred and when the War was upon us. The memories of the people that were from El Pauwe remain and are, are bitter. Some of our people were told to leave their homes, their farms, their ranches, their livestock. Some of them split up, families split up. Some decided to go and stay in Idaho. The others said, no, we're going to remain free and we're going to be, we're going to go to the mountains and be with our cousins. What happened afterwards is something that is in history books and so forth, but all of that, what was provided here, the sustenance, the support for people. This place here, Chief Timothy Park, original Silcott Island for his daughter, beautiful lady. She decided then at that time that she would marry outside of the tribe, marry outside the family, of course, and rest his history. This was all orchards at one time. We had a lot of things to do. We would come here, and uh, somebody mentioned, I think it was Shannon, that the lessons learned here with my youngest son, or excuse me, my oldest son, and uh, his cousins were how to gaff, catching suckers here at the mouth of the El Pauwe. All the older people wanted the suckers. Salmon was okay, but they said they would like to have suckers. So we did that in spite of what occurred. One of the landowners blew up a bluff to dam the creek so we couldn't go back in there again. 
So if we live through that insult, then the irony is that I recall the snake before it became dammed. The snake was a beautiful river. It in and out of the it swirled in some places, other places it was slow moving in pools, lots of beaches. Lots of interaction between communities on all the beaches that were up and down through here. At night, it looked like fireflies in the air. You'd see all the fires going in the beaches. That continued on up into Saminicum, up to El um, Asotan. All these places that we saw, I don't want to say we took it for granted, but when the dam started going in, we could see that besides Salilo, besides Salilo losing that, that ceremonial fish that we depended upon, we then lost all the others. Lewiston Dam was an insult. Washington Water Power Dam was put up just short of the casino now today. Fish ladder was built for small steelhead. It was not built for salmon or sadly for sturgeon or for lamprey. We lost all those species because they thought that they were providing a service to the public. They tore the dam down because it, did, it failed. We've had insult upon injury through the years when they proposed and got the money from Washington. The Federal Dam Commission wanted to build and flood the Imnaha which is one of our Oregon rivers, the Signature River, like the Selway is in Idaho. They proposed to dam that, flood the whole of Naha Valley. I was dispatched then at that time. We didn't have a fishery department at that time, or you know the, the attorneys that were there were contract attorneys. So go tell them that we're not going to support this, and we will probably end up in court. They had the money, they had the wherewithal. But all of a sudden they thought and they prevailed on it because we told them, you're not only harming us, you're harming all the ranchers and the farmers, the people that came in after we left, now you're going to flood them out. Now you know how we feel. That was the public meeting that said that. Then the next project was <laughs> lower in the system to create what they said, well, we're going to honor you this time. The Amnaha Dam, well, we're not going to do that, but we'll do this next one. We have the money again. The Nespers Dam. The Nespers Dam, what the hell are you thinking about? And so that came, that was thrown on the table to our council. In those days, it, uh, I was proud of them because they just said, no. They've already blocked off all of our fishery. And that was back in the 70s when that happened. Count the decades since then we've had this problem. We swore to recover and restore all species, all populations, so that our people could have the ability of having access to fish. Everything was there. So now, if we go back to a natural selection, that's probably the only way we've done 20 years worth of study on, and I was told by our head research person in fisheries, he says, Zai, we have another 20 years to go, 40 years to determine if we're gonna be able to save those salmon on our own with natural flows. We've done the first 20, then all of a sudden, last night, we talked about it, the forestry meeting. There was other elements of 20 years. We all abide by the fish runs, which are five years. The salmon has five years. With that, you know, we know that we count the decades when we're going to have success. And everyone has a part to play in that. Because it's going to become a public issue. Not, not something that we generated. We're not being selfish. If we are selfish, it's to protect the land so that everybody 
can have the bounty from it. Everybody can have the bounty that from the water, cold, clear water that comes from the mountains. We have only two glacial-fed rivers left. And they support their own fish runs. One's in Oregon, one's in Idaho. We see the glaciers melting. That's going to cause a big impact another five years, 10 years down the road. So all these things are some things we're working on behind the scenes, but by the time the issue comes around to are we gonna be able to survive these, the public is working with us They're going to be standing with us when uh, either we're going to determine it's a success or it's a failure. We had to provide the sustenance for the people. That's what counts. That's what drives the work that we do. How much harvest do or the bounty from the harvest do you need? What do we need? We meaning all of us. That goes feeding also the orcas. That goes in having other fisheries as we follow this run up into Alaska and it comes back. All those things need and require necessary ongoing research. We have to change with that, which we will do. So on behalf of the land and the Mipu, the way people here, the people of the, of the earth that's left here, you look around you, there's stories all over about the coyote story, about the beginning what happened when they created the floods? There's a conical mountain behind us. That's where it's the Yaya Coyote. That's where he perched and watched the water come down after they had the big event in Mon what's called Montana today. That water came down and gouged out these canyons. We recorded that. People said, oh, that's BS. Ah, that, those are just folk tales. Well, why is a description of what happened on map today and match up exactly with what our elders told us, this is what we're gonna be left with, or this is what we have left with. I didn't come from an, uh, a drone flight looking over the, the systems. You know, that was, that was something that rolled back, rolled back, came to a time when they said, we will take care of these humans, the two-legged, as long as they take care of us, those that fly, those that swim, know that walk on four legs. When that happens, we will continue to protect and support them. So, that's said enough. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Silas, former chair of the Nez Perce tribe, and Chairman Penny, and also council member Arthur Brancho. As I stated before, I'd just like an opportunity to speak about uh, the salmon and how that intertwines uh, not only us to the land, but the land to us and us to other people. As I speak to us, I speak to all the people. And what we know now, what we've experienced, what the science tells us, and what the technology can do for us. So we know through experience, through our stories that were just shared with you, and these are only just a few of our stories that were shared with you. and the amount of salmon that returned to this area and the villages, uh, numerous dispersed villages, over 78 villages along these, along these tributaries and dating back to 16,500 years to this point. So I think that kind of knocked the uh, ice bridge out. So the Nespers have been here in our creation story. We sprang from here. We sprang from the blood of the monster in Kamii, the heart of the monster is there. So we know our history has been passed on to us and we know our creation story and the, the, what the animals in their meeting did for us. And Salmon being the first one to step forward to give himself to us. 
And when he gave himself to us, he said, I give myself to them for their survival, but I will lose my voice when I give myself to them. So it'll be up to them to speak for me. And so that's what the tribe has been doing for many years. And I've stated this many times before in a pragmatic way of thinking, a thinking of what we know today, experience and science. We look at what the salmon has already been doing. The landscape is so rich here. When Lewis and Clark came here, they were fed salmon. They were fed uh, roots and camas and, and berries. And the Nespers helped them survive their journey. And, and they wrote about the vastness and richness of this, of this territory, of Nespers territory. And that was due to the return of the millions of salmon that used to return, the millions of steelhead, and the millions of lamprey that returned to this area, bringing the nutrients back from the ocean to the mountaintops. And as that relationship then started for us when salmon gave himself to us. So as, as we look into, into the past and our experiences and what we share with you and what we've shared with, with the federal government, federal action agencies, and, and, and all the different people are, that are out there that, that are intertwined to the salmon by the way of water, by the way of this Columbia River system of operations. We have irrigation, we have tourism, we have recreation, we have transportation, we have energy, all of these different sectors that are tied to the water. So when Congressman Simpson of Idaho proposed the Columbia Basin Initiative and taking a comprehensive look at the full system because of salmon, because of the critical juncture that salmon are at currently and how that threatens not only the salmon but the rest of the species that to follow and the nest purse are, are in that as is we're related to the salmon and the salmon are related to us we're related to the land and the land is and, and we're tied to the land as well so when congressman simpson came forward with this comprehensive plan and proposal you know, it was met with opposition, of course it would be, because there's other things in, in the world now today that we all enjoy. We enjoy turning our lights on. We enjoy charging our phones, watching our TVs. So energy is important to all of us. You know, the Nespers Tribe has solar panels that we've uh, installed and, and are looking for uh, to continue to move into the renewable areas. We have agriculture fields. We have 50,000 acres of land in production. So transportation is important to us. We understand that transport, that agriculture is a negotiating tool in, in negotiating tariffs and with other countries. So we know how important that is as well. We have tourism. We have a casino. We have those types of services that when people come here, we share what we have with those people and are part of the economy. So we're in tourism as well. And the transportation portion is as, as important to us as it is to everyone else. But, so we know these things and we admit these things. So we speak the core truths about what is happening and what we know through experience. And then we listen to the science. The science says... The salmon are moving down from the acclimation sites or from their natural spawning areas, and they, they move down. And once they hit the slack water, they start running into problems. Once they hit that first dam, they run into another problem. So with sediment buildup and the, the channels that are, are reduced, predators that are in those channels now have a smorgasbord when the juvenile migration begins. And also, without the, the numbers of lamprey, that outnumbered the salmon and steelhead both out of that system that's reduced to the salmon and steelhead as the sources of food for those predators that are in the water now. 
So the sediment's an issue. And then you bring in uh, the slack water, which we know, you know, the, the water is going to warm. And then even with climate change now, it's even warming at a faster rate. And we're experiencing a summer right now like no other. So we know that. Then we also know they hit the dams then. So once they hit the dams, they're either going over the spillway or they're going through the turbines. And I don't know about any of you, but I've scraped myself on on a sidewalk before and a bike wreck and it didn't feel too well. And so these salmon are going over those concrete barriers and through these turbines and they're being injured. Their survival rate through those dams, the 50% survival rate on the way to the ocean. And they face all these pools going down with all of these similar problems all the way down. And then they, they're expected to survive once they get to the big game, the ocean. And with those conditions changing and the predators that are out there that they're running from, are they in complete health? I, I look at it as, a, as an Olympic athlete training, the training for the Olympics. And once he's training for the Olympics, two weeks before the Olympics, he's made the team, she's made the team, sprained their knee. And they're expected to go perform at a world-class level. Well, this is life or death for salmon when they go through all of these, this gauntlet and they're maimed or they're injured or they're facing gas bubbles going down through there. So the science tells us that these things are impeding their survival and their health as they migrate to the ocean. So we know that. And then we know the ocean conditions now are just another issue, another obstacle that they currently face. So as we, as we start to continue to look at those, and those are the core truths of what is happening. And that's what the science tells us. So then again, Congressman Simpson tells us that, well, I've looked at dam breaching 20 years ago. I laughed at it. You're going to take out the dams? <laughs> no way. Those dams aren't coming out. There's got to be another way for salmon to survive. Well, at the Nez Perce Tribe, we've definitely turned all the dials that we can turn in restoration in all the areas and hatchery production. And we just, uh, our scientists came out with a, did a report on, on uh, natural spawners in all of these tributaries uh, behind uh, in the Snake River Basin. And out of that, 42% of, of those natural spawners are at the quasi-extinction threshold which uh, means that there are 50 fewer natural spawners going into those tributaries for four consecutive years in a row, 42%. That's where we're at currently. So the trajectory is, is on a downward spiral. And in four more years, that number is, to, is looking at, at a 77 percentile in that area of of meeting that quasi-extinction threshold with 50 fewer natural spawners returning for four consecutive years. So those numbers, that's the science. So Congressman Simpson's proposal proposes that through technology, through renewable energies, through different modes of transportation, that we can change things. We can do business better. And that's exactly what his proposal is meant to do, to start the discussions so that we can look at a better, stronger Northwest. Not only just for the salmon, but for, for the people that exist here and for the United States of America, for the strength of this country to propel our irrigators, our growers, our energy needs ahead of the rest of the world. Because... I'm pretty sure we're behind a lot of the world now in a lot of those areas. So his proposal is meant to do that, is to be a better irrigator, be a better grower, how we utilize our energies better, and at the same time solve a problem that the United States Army Corps of Engineers knew was going to happen when they built these dams. They knew that. They knew that when they built these dams. So, 
experience tells us what we had, what was here. Experience tells us what we've been experiencing, what the salmon have been experiencing. And technology tells us that we can do things better. We can do things stronger, smarter. And that would, that would be up to the people to decide that. We vote, we vote for congressional leaders to, to speak to us, to speak for us, to make these difficult decisions. And they are difficult decisions because you have constituents uh, of many different entities, the ones that we're speaking of, talking also to those same congressional leaders. Whether they're a representative or a senator, they're speaking to them. So we really need to speak the core truths here. And the truth is that we are, the salmon are in a dire, dire scenario right now. And it's time to change that. And I'm just thankful for uh, um, all the work that's being done out there and, and the unity of the tribes, the unity of the uh, the Columbia River tribes, the unity of the Columbia Basin tribes, every all the tribes that are behind Bonneville coming together, and then also the unity of the affiliated tribes of the Northwest Indians coming together. That's all the Northwest tribes that are in, in that organization and have passed resolutions. The Nespers tribe passed a resolution in 1999. And as of recently, we passed a resolution naming the Snake River as a living being which it is, it's a living being. It supports life and it is life. And now national, the National Congress of American Indians have passed a resolution as well, supporting Congressman Simpson's proposal and the breaching of the four lower Snake River dams. So that's the fight where we're at. So as we look what salmon means to not only to to uh, us as people, but what it means to the larger landscape and the riches of the Pacific Northwest of what, why and how this place came to be, 300, 400, 500 year old trees, uh, vegetation, just, you know, fields and fields of grass and roots and berries that uh, supplied much. And, and I know people can say, well, is that enough to sustain uh, the whole Pacific Northwest off of those natural foods? Well, no, it ain't. Because so that's why agriculture is a part of uh, a part of it, too, because you have to supplement our diets. We have to supplement our diets. So those are just the things that we think about, the things that we're, that uh, as we talk, and, and those other interests that we are a part of. I mentioned where we have energy. We have a dam on our land. It's on trust land, Dwarshack Dam is also blocking fish, but that's on Nespers tribal land. We also have Hales Canyon, which is also in our usual and accustomed area. So our area is vast. The Nespers tribe treated with the United States of America in 1855 at arm's length to negotiate a peace treaty and reserve a way of life. And that was ratified, that, that uh, Peace Treaty was signed in 1855, ratified in 1859, enshrined in the United States Constitution under Article 6, Clause 2, the Supremacy Law. In perpetuity, we would reserve this way of life, and salmon is a way of, that, a way of life for us. And we would just ask the congressional leaders, the federal action agencies, the Biden-Harris administration, to uphold that obligation to the tribe and to the people that, that the tribe represents and to the, to the salmon, to the orca, to the, to the steelhead, to the lamprey, to the landscape. And all of the Northwest tribes that are in the uh, same situation and all of the people of the Pacific Northwest that are in the same situation. That's an obligation. The, the dams were put in under federal authority and it started in the 1930s. The, where Congressman Simpson's proposal is now is an authorization of funding to support the plan, the Columbia Basin Initiative. That's also a federal, a federal authority. And 
the Nez Perce tribe and the treaty is also a federal obligation that the, that the uh, federal government has to uphold. So this needs to be at that federal level. So as we continue to advocate for dam breaching and salmon recovery, we look to not only the tribes, not only all of the allies, the, the, the non-governmental organizations, conservation groups, and, and all of those that support speaking the truth is what we're, what we're after, what we're fighting for. So that's just a part of the story of where we're currently at. So I'd like to thank the totem people for being here and expressing themselves in the way that they do. I'd like to acknowledge our tribal leaders, our tribal elders, our tribal members that are here, and all of you that are here to support these efforts and to witness these efforts moving forward. So with that, I would end there. Wako yokolo. Good afternoon. My name is Lucy Simpson, and my famous boss is Julian Matthews, the one that I work with. So we'll give him a hand for doing this. Um, what we're going to do um, first, oh, I got to say my name, Lucy Simpson, and then my Indian name is Ipnau Mokat from the Nesper side. But I'm also Nooksack too, so these are my relations. We're all related on the coast, and we're all related here. So. I don't know if I'll say this right, but I ish kakits slashin lak tumish. Is that right? And this is welcome, people of the sea. And I will pray for praying wolf, which is Jewel James. That's his his name, uh, praying wolf. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna have all those people that were given a sprig of cedar and they're gonna go around the canoe, follow him around, get in line around the totem pole. We've done a couple canoes and this is a totem, so, okay, come on. And he's gonna walk around and he's gonna touch with his um, cedar and then go around the other side and then they're gonna put their hand on the uh, totem and then ha hold their cedar in there and we'll end with a prayer. So we'd like to get everybody lined up that was given a piece of cedar, all our helpers here. Bless each and every one for helping us out in every way. Uh, all our veterans that are in line, everybody here, bless you all for helping us with this journey. This has got to travel a long way. This is a third totem blessing that I've been to. The one at Sandpoint when we had trouble with the oil, oil trains and there's possible spills and things. And then the one over at Elliott Bay where they're taking another totem on a long journey. So this is the third totem I've been to with our, with our people here. We're all related in one way or another. And these are all our helpers here with the cedar to bless this journey, to help this journey on its way. We all have these things we need to work on here. Every Indian nation has a problem. They all have issues. There's either not enough water, there's not enough electricity for the Navajo, a lot of places are with a lot, without a lot of things. On the Navajo, they have to truck their water in to different places. And some places with water in Canada are getting poisoned, poisoned by the snake, getting cancer, and different things wrong with them now. And Indians were healthy people at one time, and they never had any sicknesses. They never had any COVID. They never had any smallpox. They never had any of this stuff here. We were people that prayed daily. We didn't just go to church on Sunday. We had church every day. Nature is our church, and it opens the doors for all of us. And there's been so many talk about the salmon and orca and everything. We need to breach those dams, and we need to do it now. Now's the time our fish are on the line. Thank you all for helping out with this totem and the blessing. And thank all our helpers here, each and every one of them. They come from different walks of life, different tribes. We have Klamath, we have Yurok, we have Nez Perce, we have all our coastal relations, and some of the elders are in line. We thank each and every one of you for doing this for us, helping our journey.
helping us get along the way here on another totem that goes back east. We're so appreciative of all this help we have, and, but we know that there's a timeline for them. So they have to get on the road. They have to go to uh, Bears Ear down Utah. They have to touch the nations that are hurting right now with these different issues. There are so many issues, they can't stop everywhere, but they're gonna be the places they can be for now because they're only human beings, but they need the prayers to go with them. Thank you all, the little ones, the elders, the veterans for doing this for us. Thank you so much for helping out. Since these guys are on a time constraint, I'll go ahead and uh, say a prayer while they're going around because we're running low on our time right now, so we gotta get going here. We don't want them to have to hurry down to Bear, uh, Bears Ear down in Utah. We want them to have a safe journey. That's what we're praying about today here. So with that, I'll say a prayer. We thank you for this day, Creator. We thank you for this totem. We thank you for these many people here blessing the totem for its journey. Creator, we pray for all the, all the people that are sick. We pray for Jewel. We pray for all our relations. Whether they're from the coast or they're from here, they're all our relations here. We pray for this day that it becomes a good day for people and that they have an open heart and open mind for those issues that we do have in Indian country, not only here, throughout. And we'd like to honor those that are gone now. LaDonna Braveheart, she passed on, but she was the one who, with the pipeline who started that camp with Jess Nightwalker. I went with him to DC to talk to the congressman. I told his mother today, when we feel those winds, it is just with us here today, Lord, our creator. We thank you for this day and we thank you for this power and for those hands that have the power to make the totem pole for us and to carry our concerns to the president and to have this placed in the museum over there that people will know this is why it is, this is so. Our land is in trouble, our waters are in trouble, our fish are in trouble. Creator, thank you so much. Kite out, yo. Hi. ACM, thank you, relative. Thank you, each of you. Thank you for your good thoughts. Thank you for your good feeling. Thank you for your good word. Look, like to thank. Uh, Former uh, chairman, I can't, I can't remember your name, but thank you. I, Telequah, Telequah carried her baby for 17 days. If you remember, if you're a human being and you have a spirit, and you've seen that mother orca when she carried her baby for 17 days, why did she do that? Why did she do that? Because their world is dying. Her message, your world is dying. You're killing your world. As human beings, we are the most wasteful. Don't you know something died for you today? A plant, an animal. No, you just go through the drive-thru and order the number two with a with a Coke. You know, when when I had a friend of mine, he's like, oh, you Indians, that's all you're doing is praying. You're always praying. Why do you guys start with a prayer? Something died for you on that table over there. Sacrifice is life. And until you start caring, until you start standing up, your world's going to continue to die. Now, we Indian people, on the other hand, 
We knew the great flood was coming. Shishesh Wahwalik. Shishesh Wahwalik. Shishesh Wahwalik. We are the survivors of the great flood. We are the Clactamish people. We are the descendants of the original 44 children. They put children in the canoe. They didn't, they sent an adult and a teenage and a couple of teenagers. Shishashwaholic. The orcas were here. They survived the great flood. The salmon were here. They survived the great flood. The clams. In the words of Jewel James, he'd say, we human beings are the coronavirus of the earth. Look what happened. Look what happened. You know, we have to say it like it is to the next generation. You know, we're, we're just messengers. We're just passing through. Corporations are people too. Citizens United. That corporation that's spilling whatever into your sacred waters, they have rights too. But remember... We have a soul. We have feelings. We have a heart as human beings. It's really tough to share this, th these words. And yeah, I'm going to go over time, you know, but that's what the spirit is all about. We could plan these events all we want, but the spirit is always in control. The spirit is always in control of your life. And, and if you think you're in control, take control. Take care of your parents, your grandparents. Take care of your family. Look after one another. Love one another. I've been saying this, go, going to all these tribes that we've been to. You know what I've seen in every tribe, including my home back, my own back at home, is the internal fighting. If you set down your differences, you know what? I don't have to agree with Siamawit or Uncle Doug or Dr. Russo, but that doesn't mean I can't compromise. Doesn't mean I have to hate them. Fear, hate, envy, jealousy, it's, it's a disease. It's a disease. If you surround yourself with positive, if you look forward and say, wow, what can I do tomorrow? But it's like, nah. Let's be the crabs in the bucket and keep pulling our people back. Keep holding them in the bucket. We don't want them to go anywhere. Well, you know what? Someday that, that bucket's going to be cooked, and you're going to be somebody's crab meat. And that's kind of a jokingly way to say it, but I'm tired of being, I'm tired of being held back. I'm tired of trying. I, I sat, sat on council for one term, three years. Couldn't do nothing. I still couldn't do nothing. So now that I'm not on council, look what we're doing. So you don't need the position or title, you young people. You grandparents and parents and great-grandparents. You go into those city council meetings, county council meetings, those public hearings, and say something. Say something for your grandchildren's children's children's great-grandchildren. That's what you speak for. We're not doing this for us. I'm, I, I was made fun of on our council because they were saying, oh, there goes Fred grandstanding again. No, I just know how to speak. I just know how to get to people and to ruffle your feathers and maybe step on your skirt and wreck your hem. You know, I don't mean it intentionally, but you know what? That's what happens when we're up in a corner fighting for our lives. If you young kids don't run for your student body or don't start getting up at your council meetings, you're, you're, go up and speak. What do you need permission? You have my permission. Because that's all sometimes you need. 
Some people say, oh, you shouldn't have said that. You offended me. Good. What are you doing about it? It's okay. It's okay to disagree. It's okay to have differences. But right now, your river is dying. And if you don't do something about it, Mother Nature will. Mother Nature will take care of herself. But look at across the world. There's fires all over. Our country is burning up. I don't think we signed treaties for climate change. I don't think we signed treaties for the federal government to go trillion and trillions of dollars in debt. My goodness. Step up, people. This is an ancestor right here, an elder, an ancient one. This is also an ancient one. You can place your hand on it and pray. I found it. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to its creator. But it's an ancient anchor if you look underneath and all the way around and the rope, how we used to catch the salmon by the thousands. We didn't catch salmon for just us in ancient time. It was for all the tribe, the clan, the family. This is an ancient tool. In, in, in the United States Constitution for you young people, if you haven't read it, read it. Read the original one. Savages. Savages. But we had savage engineers. We had savage engineers that could make this anchor. We had savage engineers that can, that can create such a gift. This used to be able to trade seven canoes in ancient times. So, yeah, I'm proud to be a savage. I'll admit it. I'm proud of my ancestors. Our relative here, her stage name is Lolita. She's been held captive since 1970 in the Miami Sequarium. If you ever go down there, you can go visit her and pay $65 to watch a, a, a show. But it's just like ancient times when, if you know your history of museums, well, she's not a whale. She's our, our relative, our Quahomachton people. Quahomachton means the people that live under the water. That's who we're trying to save. The Quahomachton rely on the salmon. There's two salmon right below the diving eagle here. Chinook, they're dying. Salmon woman's children are dying. At the top here, you're going to see the full moon come up. There's an Indian in the moon. If you ever look real closely, he's got his legs crossed, his feathers leaning over. Of course, we know what the missing and murdered indigenous women. I was gonna, we were going to ask uncle if we could put some orange hands from for to represent the missing and murdered indigenous children. Since 1886, they're buried at Chamao Indian School, where I proudly graduated in 1986. For our ancestors, the boarding school's terrible atrocity. It's a ter I don't know how we have to heal, but first. The United States government has to recognize the American Holocaust they created. We were sent to reservations like Hitler sent the Jews to concentration camps. That's what he based the concentration camps off the American Indian reservation system. That is a fact. If you don't know your history, it American history begins with the American Indian. And there's so much almost lost. You heard the relative, the former chairman, say it. 
He remembers, he remembers how rich you are to have to, to hear that. I didn't know I was going to hear these words. I'm really glad it came out because now I know more why I'm here. Now I know more why each and every one of you are here to witness the words and the work that takes place. Yeah, we have a long drive. Trust me, a 19-hour day driving, that is a long day. So a couple, six, seven hours is no problem. Our Shalangan, our Shalangan for our relatives that live here, in our language is our way of life. So not only we were taken from our homelands when we put our X on the treaty. Imagine signing a treaty and you can't even sign your own name. An X on the treaty. But our Shalangan is our way of life. We too, our salmon are dying. Our Shalangan, our Shalangan is almost gone our way of life. So like the Kohomachtin, like our people, but we are resilient. We survived the American Holocaust. We survived smallpox and boarding schools and the church. And I have to say publicly that the queen and the governments of Canada and the United States and the Pope all have blood on their hands because of the atrocities of the boarding schools. You have to say it, and somebody eventually is going to have to tell them that. And there's no nice way of saying that. But to say it with a true heart, I could come up here with a speech and tell you. I could come up here and ask you to stand with us. I could come up and share with you all the beautiful thousands of people that are standing with each of you in a good heart, a good mind, good way. Thank you for allowing us to come through the territory. Thank you to the elders that are here. Thank you to the ancestors and our loved ones. A lot of us are real tender because we lost somebody. We lost our beloved chief. But before he passed, he said to me, don't stop, Fred. He said, don't stop until Lolita's home, until Tokatai's home, until Scally Chaktanuk's home. And you know what else he said to me? I'll always be with you. And, and I usually, we usually quit speaking. You know, but he said to me, when he said, don't stop, you know, that's where this today comes from, with the blessings of our, our ancestors. But this is a, a, a wolf. It, it's also shape-shifted, I say, into a sea wolf. On the other side is a bear, the brown And then you can see it shape-shifted into a sea bear. I call them, some people call them sea lions. I think they should be called sea bears. On this side, there's the dancing eagle feather. Sasiath had a dream. The copper represents our relatives to the north. We're all relatives. We're all... Related by blood, I heard this on this journey. Down here is the seven sacred peyote beads in green. The grandmother right here, her hand is painted red. She's missing her granddaughter. That's gra her daughter. That's why you see the, the granddaughter on this side. And she's got a shaker. She's got one of her tears of the seven generations of trauma that our people have gone through and survived. On this side is a cage, and there's a child in the cage, and he's got a fist. 
These are in honor of the children that were separated, just like the government did to our, our people. They're doing it right now at the U.S.-Mexican border. You know, so... Before I hand the mic over, and I know we're on a time limit, but this is our scrapbook. If you can, maybe after we get some lunch, come by and come sign our scrapbook. That's what we're going to give. We're going to give one to the president and then the other to the House of Tears Carvers that made this beautiful creation. And so, like I mentioned, our, 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 our journey is guided by spirit. Couldn't do it without the help of our journalists and our friends that are live and online. I want to thank them for being here. I want to thank, again, the council. Um, I have to turn it over to our Uncle Doug because I'm starting to melt here. I'm from the Pacific Northwest, and we don't usually melt this easy. But we'll be here. Melanie, if you're a painter, artist, come Come be a part of the history there. And don't forget to sign our scrapbook. Pray for our relatives. Pray for your our ancestors that, that their bones may never be disturbed again. I was thinking about that, of when they flooded the area. And I was thinking, who gave them permission to put a bunch of water over the ancestors? You know, who gave them permission to dam up and take your salmon? That's what I ask. Consultation is not consent. And so really glad the young people are here. Really thankful for the elder that opened us up with the prayer and your your family. Thank you. Heiska. Heiska. And remember when we leave, it's never goodbye. In our language, it's haikwacha. Haikwacha. Haikwacha, until we see you again. So with that, if nobody told you they loved you today, we love each and every one of you. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Sol Kedab. Once again, my name is Sitki Kedam, my stallus. Seamowit. It's a great honor today to share a breath of time with each and every one of you. To the elders, Heishka, from the bottom of our hearts here. We have a picture that was uh, donated. And it was a picture of a cloud at night that she was taking. She was uh, wondering which direction she was going to go next. Tob Toby? Mo? Is it Mo? Toby. Oh, there you are. <laughs> can, you, can you come forward? Yeah. But this, uh, this photograph is absolutely phenomenal, and it was taken at night. You can see Orion in the distance, and you can see the moon right here, right there where the eye is. And I'd like to have you briefly say a little something on that. Okay. <laughs> you know, how... Okay, so the story is I was um, going to make a short documentary about the orcas and the fact that they're starving because the Chinook are going extinct because of the Snake River Dam. But there are so many different um, ways to approach the story. And so I was thinking what to do, and I went out side and looked up at the sky and that was there and I took it with my iPhone <laughs> and it was a miracle it turned out like that and I was like well that's my answer 
follow the salmon. So that's what I'm doing. I'm working with Julian Matthews, trying to make something to get more and more people motivated because the momentum is growing and growing. So thanks, everyone, for being here, and thank you for being here. You know, when we carved uh, that 20-foot whale pole back in four years ago and brought that right down to Miami, before we left on that journey, we were uh, introduced to a chief from the Queen Charlotte's Islands in Canada up there, and then uh, another chief from the Fraser Valley. And they wanted to know why and what we were up to with the orca thing, you know. And so we were explaining to them, you know, that uh, this resident was one of ours that was captured off out of the the uh, San Juan Islands when she was four years old. And she's been in that sequarium ever since for over 50 some years, 54, 55 years. And She's uh, been crying out. Is anybody out there that can hear me? She wants to go home. Says, I want to go home. And there's a lot of people that have been hearing this message that have the ears to hear, you know, and they've been relaying that message to us. So I uh, just really, you know, it's for those that don't have a voice that are crying out, you know, they do have a right. They do have families. They do live together for all the days of their lives. And she was like the children that were taken from us a long time ago and thrown into them schools. She's gone to the same atrocities, taken away her way of life, her language, and taught her how to be something she's not a showgirl. You know, and so we're trying to bring her back home, see. Um, so with the... So with this, uh, I would just want to say hi to the donation of this uh, beautiful photo. And uh, do you want to say? We're, uh, we need to share a song with you. And it was um, this is our national anthem song. And it's uh, also our flood song. Oh, see him.
Once again, to all of the elders, our hands are out to you, saying Heishka to each and every one of you for sharing a breath of time with us today. That is the, that is the song, the we are the survivors of the flood. We are, we are the survivors of the flood. We are water people. We are salmon people. Our original story speaks of who we are as survivors to stand strong. Our original stories tell about our first generation of how we related to the salmon people. Our original story tells us that long time ago at the mouth of the river in the Salish Sea, after the flood, the great flood, our people survived. They survived, but they were hungry because the waters have not receded completely yet. The people were hungry. The chief sent out his son, Raven, sub-chief, to go out and find some food for the people. Sent him out on a canoe. He went out into the water. And when he went out to the water, the fog settled in. And the water was all covered. And he became very exhausted. He be became very discouraged, thinking his people were going to die. So he started singing his death song. And when he sang his death song, Salmon Woman heard him. And she came swimming up to him. And she said, why are you crying? He said, our people are hungry, so I'm going to die. And so she said, take your hat off, your cedar hat off. Dip it in the water. He dipped his hat into the water. And she shared her children with Raven. And he was able to have encouragement. She took the children, the, told the rest of her children, go swim to his village and lead him back to his people. So he went back to the village. And when he arrived there, when the salmon woman arrived there, Raven introduced her. She brought her children here so that we can survive. And she shared her children willingly with the people. She was very happy to help them survive. She had a condition. Please do not take my children from their spawning beds when they rest in the river. And so that was the condition. And the people were very prosperous and happy. They were, hungry. They were no longer hungry. The water started going down, and they went about. And they started hunting and gathering like how they did before the flood. And they started gathering, so Raven and Salmon Woman went out on a hunting trip. And while they were gone, Bear went up to the spawning beds. Bear was brother to Raven. Bear goes up there thinking nobody would know what he did, but he went up there and he put his bear spirit on all of the salmon that were in the river, the coho, the, Ch the Chinook, and all the, the sockeye, all the other fish, the salmon that were all the relatives. He touched all of them and they all they all died. They all died and they started floating down the stream. And so people started crying and wailing when Raven and Salmon Woman came back to the village. Salmon Woman was so enraged, so angry that her children have died. And so she said, I'm going to bring my children my remaining children now back out to the water, to the big water. And so she went out with the remaining children. And then Raven, Raven said, well, I don't want you to leave, so I'll make a condition. I'll tell. So he put some 
black powder on bear, and he turned bear black, and he told him, you are now going to have to leave our village, brother. You're going to have to go up to the mountain. If you come back to the village, they will eat you. So he sent bear away, and he also told him, you're going to walk on four legs now because back then our relatives were like us. They could walk on two legs. So they went, bear left the village. So Salmon Moon was happy, and people were happy again until somebody decided to start complaining about the sacred food that they were eating. I don't like salmon. I'm tired of salmon. Too much salmon all the time, barbecue salmon, boiled salmon. We have salmon soup. We have all these different ways of eating salmon, but we're so tired of the salmon. So again, of course, Salmon Woman was offended because they're talking about her children. So she wanted to leave again. Raven tried to convince her once again that he wants her to come back to feed the people because the people were getting hungry again because of the consequences of their, of their hateful words. The salmon left. So Salmon Woman agreed that she, from now on, she'll send her salmon up just one, one species at a time because she wanted to protect her children. When Bear, I forgot to tell you about Bear, when Bear was up at the river, when Raven caught him, he was just about to touch Steelhead. Steelhead wasn't touched by Bear. And that's why you see Steelhead, they, after they spawn, they go back out to the big water. They don't, they, the rest of the salmon, they will, after they um, are in the river, that's where they die now, the, the rest of the salmon, except for the steelhead. But now we have to teach our children, be respectful of the salmon. Be respectful. This is the way that we survive. This is who we are. We must respect the salmon. So today, we continue on protecting salmon women's children. So I want to thank you, all my brothers and sisters, who continue on the good fight for protecting salmon women's children. And at this time, we'd like to have a, a blessing for the table.
forgive one another, to forgive one another. Oh. ACM. As uh, thank you. I I know this wasn't on the agenda to stay this long, but I want a round of applause if you can. Put your food down for a second for the servers. Just a little round of applause. You know I'm. I just know a little encouragement and thank thank you, Julian and the cooks. Let's have another big round of applause for the cooks. Really appreciate the. The love that we have here, I know, um, I, I just was going to mention this. If you see me in the background, I speak, and then I go run, and I'm actually getting ready because we've got to jump on the road and travel 400 miles. But at this point, it's uh, it's kind of routine now. But thanking the, the salmon for sacrificing its life and, and the plants and the just thanking the uh, you know, the um, Jewel mentioned about creation, and and so, uh, you know, we're all here. I'm, I'm going to touch on a situation that uh, I, I touched me when I was over just walking in the parking lot, and that's suicide. And uh, it's kind of, you know, I, I just have to say, because I'm a survivor, and I was a young person when this happened to me, and the elder told me, he told me about, you know, look at look at all the sacrifice. Look at the sacrifice the salmon is doing. Look at the sacrifice it's doing to to continue to thrive and to to give each of us life. And um 
at one reservation, they asked me to talk about it because it it's sensitive to some people. But, you know, uh, uh, the elder told me back at home, if you don't talk about it and confront it, then it's going to keep happening. And how the elder told me, and I'm just going to share this, is you got, you're here for a reason. Every single one of you is a sacred being, is a sacred being, every single one of you. So when you, when you do this, you don't have permission from God, if you will, the great spirit. You don't have permission to take your own life. You don't have permission from your grandparents and your parents and your family. No matter how tough life gets, I'm a three-time survivor, okay? That's a fact. But always remember, somebody loves you. Somebody loves you. I wouldn't be, if if I succeeded, I wouldn't be here doing the work. And so that's the message that came from our relatives in across Indian country, that you just know the signs. If you see somebody and they start crying and they need help, that's the sign. You're all human beings. We're all, in our language, Wamuk. Wamuk, we're Indian, we're human beings. And, and I hope we all bleed the same color blood because I watch Ancient Aliens on the History Channel. And so if you don't bleed red blood, well, geez, come forward. You must be a... Uh, I, I hope you don't have green blood. Let's see. But, you know, we, we, we want to come here. We, we talk about serious situations and... And we get serious, but at the same time, you know, we do it with love. And we do it with passion. And sometimes we have to have an angry voice. Sometimes we have to talk real loud because that young person way in the back that might think he's nobody's listening to him or there it's real important. So you young people, again, just thanking the spirit, thanking Julian. I want another big round of applause for Julian here putting this together. Right to nature, man, right here. Helping the spirit. We're helping the spirit. The spirit of the ancestors. The spirit of the great chiefs. I tell you a story about how powerful you women, our women are. My auntie told me this story, and she says, you never find this in the history books. So I'm going to tell you. A little story before I I finish about how powerful our women warriors are. She said, and this is my Auntie Mary Plaster, she said, Nephew, don't ever forget that behind every great man, every great clan leader, every great chief, chairman is a powerful woman. And he said, she says, you want to know how powerful the women were, our Clactamish people? The men would go high into the mountains here, just right outside the village. And they would find a great tree. They'd find the tree and they'd take the tree down, the men, and the tree would fall. Back in ancient times, the tree would fall right over past those rocks there. A great cedar tree a western red cedar tree would sacrifice its, itself. And so the men would drop the tree, and then the men would take care of the tree, delimbing it and praying as they did their work, taking off the top and delimbing it. And once the tree who sacrificed its life was lying there, and then the men would start clearing the way. The, the men would, all the men in, of the clan would start clearing the way for the tree. And the women would line up on each side of the tree. The women, the grandmothers, the grand, 
great grandmothers, the great great grandmothers would line up and they wouldn't touch the tree. But the women sang a song. And you can only imagine what the women's song was like. And it got louder and louder. And by the end of the fourth verse, the women would put their hand, they'd put their arms above the, the sacred tree. And their power of their song would lift the tree with no hands, but just the power of the power of the life givers. And the tree would lift up, and the women would continue to sing their song, walking the 5,000-pound, 400-year-old tree down to where the village was by the water where the men would build the canoe. That's how powerful, that's a story that you'll never hear, never read in a history book, but my Auntie Mary Plaster told me about how powerful, how those songs would continue to come back, how our Indian people will take our rightful place at the table, how you young men and women will go to law school and, and just like Chief Dan George says, see you in the houses of law and government. So if you need that encouragement to go to school, I mean, I went to art school. Come on now. Nah. I went to art school. Uh, being, you know, no, Nobody ever told me I was going to be a politician or anything. And then this one guy told me, he says, oh, you're a politician, huh? So you're handing out lollipops and then taking them right away from the children, right? And I was like, no, nah, I'm not that kind of politician. But, you know, we're just thankful. Thankful for Julian. Thankful for all of you. Uh, thank you for the thanks to the cooks and the cooks helpers and, and all those that help help make this day possible. And again, our love, gratitude, appreciation is with each and every one of you from the youngest to the oldest. Thank you for allowing us to pass through the territory. Thank you. Thank you for your words, Mr. Vice, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I needed to hear that. And, and we encourage you. We encourage you, the, the tribe, to do a proclamation so that we get it by July 28th. And I encourage any of you young people to write a letter to Secretary Holland. Write a letter to the president and say we stand in solidarity. I challenge you to do a petition to a petition to breach the dams. Who's doing that? Where are the young people that are doing this? You may not be able to vote, but at least you can gather some signatures and bring the awareness. I challenge you, do that and, and present it to us on the 28th and see how many thousands of signatures you could get to protect these sacred lands and water. With that, hi, Skusiam, thank you. Okay, so uh, we got some, we got some pork, we got some uh, pork, and so we're gonna eat now and then um, have um, Dan do a prayer. So go ahead and um, like we have sandwiches over here and chips and stuff, and we have fry bread and uh, salmon over here. So help yourself to whatever you want to do. Then Valvita's next. And before we leave, we want to get a picture after we do our, our our final blessing after everybody's done. We'll get a picture and a prayer. Well, we'll do the prayer first. Then we usually line up and do a picture. We usually put all the youth on, on each side of the totem and then everybody, the elders in front here. And then we have a video that we've been working on uh, in the 104 stops that we've been doing. So before we leave, so high school, thank you.
Hello? You make us cut the air, you touch laughing. Next to Etsy and Yuma, loud he was. You make us cut the air, you honey, you what? Kaleen, he would teach it my two week to pull out sick. You make us cut the air, you honey, you what? Natita with her eye out, not to token, near me pull out, not. You make us cut the air, you. Taught my out seek pick up wet this out na na talk emes kaka kawukia kahasu ana to yam out na kaki kaus kamsip. Kamas, Satan, Kaya, Wilitims, Ka, Timus, Timis, Ka, Imakas Kotiaya, Hipped, Nakawiya, out na, Imakas Kotiaya, Noxik, Kus, Pick a wet this out na. You make us cut the air out in them, honey, you are. Because I ain't to what teeth it my. And the teeth out with her eye it. And the meat pull out now. Hello. I'm thankful to be here today with you all, my family, relatives, and friends. I'm very thankful for this day to be here. I'm thankful for the creator that made me, Valvita Hunt, my English name, my Indian name is Tiwa Titetmai, and I come from Spalding, Idaho. We call it Chuikta. And I'm very thankful for all our foods that we all talked about here in the water. I went down the line as the law that I live this way of life our first foods, our traditional foods as they lay, our salmon, our, our fish, any of the fish that fall in line in our eels, our buffalo, our elk, our deer, the game, and our roots, and the berries. Our lives as Indian people, we live life as circles, of hoops and loops through geology of time, it says so. From the beginning of plants that walked on this land in the trees in the breath of life that gives us the breath of life and who we are in this earth. And I'm very thankful for the creator. There's always light that hits the earth somewhere there's always light, that we live our lives in the light for these foods and the spirits that make us so. I'm thankful for this totem pole. I'm very thankful that it's come here in the meaning and the purpose for our Indian people. Because of this creation, the foods, the water, the foods, this is why we are sovereign. It's why we are connected to this land. And it's a mean of force. I'm very thankful. And I just wanted to come up here and say a few words. I'm a lifetime gatherer of our way of life in the seven drum religion. Brought up, born, and raised in it. I gather foods every year. Sometimes people tell me I need to slow down, but my heart doesn't know any different. And through the years, I've been experiencing the gathering, the cutting of the fish, the resemblance of our wild salmon, and the difference of our farm salmon. It saddened me as I cut fish. Now I know the difference. 
as it's talked about education. Education. My way of life was my first education. My first teachers were my grandmother, my great-grandmother, and being brought into the longhouse. And it saddens me because when I go dig roots from time to time, past 25, 30 years, we get these early bloomers, you know, fakers, and then the weather changes. I've been seeing the climate change for years. And I know a lot of us Northwest gatherers that gather our foods for our families and our community. We've been recognizing it. And we go and try to speak to one another. How can we help? How can we save our foods? And as our teachings, we, we dig our foods. I just thankful again, you know, I don't want to take too much of your time, but I have a song that I want to sing. As I said, all these words and prayer for this totem pole in my heart and my light and each and every one of you guys' light, we're all important. Creator made us all. And I was brought up and raised that religion is a fragile pearl of beads and we circle around one another. Like I said, our life's a grain of circle hoops and loops as years and generations. All right, and just one, Nox when tiny and I'm hung you out, one song. You can stay sitting if you would like. Hi. Hey. 